So I thought I would explain to you uh, how I reuse my yeast. So I do um, top cropping. So in the fermenter at the moment is WLP023 and uh, this is the third time of using it now. So you can see it's coming out the airlock. So I'm going to top crop it now and uh, I'll show you what I do. So first of all, I've got three jars in, uh, just soaking in Starzan. Um, I've got um, I've got a stainless steel ladle as well, and that's in there as well. And uh, that's all nicely sanitised, so I'll take them out when I need them. And uh, I'll get this set up so you can watch me uh, take some yeast out of the fermenter. So, I'm just going to take that airlock out and put that to the side. There, a fair bit of pressure in there. So that'll all get cleaned up and uh, I'll get a new one in there after my service. Let's take the lid off now. So I'm going to take the lid off completely. So I'm, I'm in the brew shed. Doors and windows are closed. There's no air movement. So there we are. So, right, the important thing is, is that I'm doing this 48 hours after fermentation started. Now the reason it's important for 48 hours is if you're taking it too soon, you're getting the lesser attenuative yeast. And that means that when you reuse it and it ferments, it's not gonna finish at 1010 or 1008 that you wanted it's going to finish higher at 1014 1016 and uh, it's not really going to be much better or not going to be any good for reusing it so you want the the yeast that is more attenuative so i'll just take it from different places probably not needed but so I'll do so I've made a starter four days before my brew day with the old or the previously top cropped uh, 023 and uh, I made the starter to 10:30 on the hydrometer and then I'll just let that go for four days. I haven't got a stir plate, I shake it um, in the morning and in the evening uh, for the four days until I'm ready to use it. And, uh, and then pitch it on the day. So. So I'll show you what I've done in a minute. Let me just get that covered up. So there we are, I've got the three jars filled up now. So what I've done is I've just got a loose lid on there and I'll leave them to carry on fermenting now for another 24 hours. And then I will condense all three jars into one and uh, I'll have a good uh, load of yeast for the next lot. So, and I'll video that shortly, in 24 hours. Okay, so we're 24 hours after I've filled the jars. So I've left a loose lid and I've let them finish fermenting. So, and you can see that a fair bit of yeast has dropped out. So. What we're going to do now is we're just going to spray the outside of the bottles, the jars, with uh, stars out. All right, and now I'm just going to take some of that 
wear it out without trying not to So we'll leave that there. Put the lid back on. And then last one. This one up. So mix the yeast back in suspension, stick it all back into one jar, and then that can go in the fridge now. There we go. So we shall let that settle out. And then we'll see how much yeast we've captured. That's it. Okay, so it's 24 hours later. Let's enter the kegerator. Here. Where are we? There we are. There's the finished yeast. That's what we've captured. 24 hours after the 24 hours of the top cropping. So that, so I'll just put that in the kegerator for now. That's uh, that's just so it can drop. I've only done it just because of the filming. So uh, that's going to go into the main fridge um, where it's kept at about at three degrees. So. Uh, and that uh, will stay there now until I'm ready to use it. So, there we go. Thanks for watching.